All right, cut the crap. <laughs> you're going to fit right in. I really, I know it's your first time here, but you're catching on quick. It's pretty much just a giant game of Scrum the Host. You've, you've, got, you've got it in one. Welcome. Some of you don't know this because you're new and you're mouthing off, so stop and I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> This is going on YouTube, it's worth mentioning, so really, bring your A-game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you cannot screw up on the internet. <laughs> 1,200 videos proven otherwise, still going. So, a lot of you don't know, we are a, a circus troupe that puts together a theater event every week that you're sitting in right now, you're soaking in it. Um, our performers... Our performers have, we've grown over the years as we've been doing this. And last Saturday was just one of those banner, record-blowing away days that has to be, we have to stop everything and mention. Last weekend, we, in two cities, fielded nine performers and additional support staff at events. <laughs> Unprecedented. The Dallas team, led by our own Johnny Morbid, taking on a job that only I was dumb enough to do previously, bravo, uh, was, was putting together a full circus show. They, they brought Catherine Chambers, who is an aerialist. They brought Scott Renkis, who is an acrobat. They brought Alan Blakely, a juggler, Monkey Jacks, poi spinner, and Rachel Hullett, who is beautiful and dances with hoops. And they put together two amazing shows that left the audience speechless. So bravo to them. I took my, I took my team, I led my team on the road uh, down by Houston where I had myself, Marie Martin, as a stilt walker and um, Little G as a performer. I also brought Thomas Jefferson with us to act as support. So we had, we had a really good crew. There was a moment where I realized that we were in a very dangerous place. I was playing a mime. Oddly enough, I do a lot of mime. For a guy who won't shut up on stage, I do a lot of mime. And little G was there spinning fire. And after his burning of things like ice sculptures uh, and, and other things, poi, amazingness, they started talking to him. And I realized, wow, he's acting as a representative of all of us. We let him speak, but here's the messed up thing, and this, this is where the man deserves a huge bravo, the man who is a walking F-bomb. <laughs> the man who is a walking F-bomb was an incredible, incredible ambassador, not just of himself, but of our troop, of our community. He speaks glowingly. By the end of the evening, everyone was so excited about having him there that they invited us to come back next year. So. To all of our performers, hell yes, we did that. You have to understand, just a couple of years ago, none of this existed. And I think the only reason why it has worked is because we keep learning. We keep, every week, we get up here like a bunch of idiots, and we do stupid things, and then we come up with an idea, and then we take it out on the road. Most of the acts that were in those two shows were developed here. So this is where we just plant the seeds and let them grow, cultivate them, and send them out in the world to do serious amounts of damage to other people's psyche. I'm really, I, I'm really excited about that, and I also love the idea that, you know, I, I'm not a young guy. I'm still learning. I learned something on the way to the venue. Now, to look at my pale complexions to realize I'm not a morning person. To also look who I hang out with pretty much sells that, too. But... I was on the road to this event, we were, it was a four hour road trip, and I'm not proud, I got hungry, we stopped for breakfast, tacos and coffee so we didn't stab anybody on the way there, like you do. And I walk in and I met a Zen master. To me, a Zen master is a child between the ages of five or six who has not yet been screwed up by the world's opinions. You, can, you should cheer for that because it's true, I'm telling you. So this kid walked in going like this. He wasn't crying, he was just making that sound. Let's all do it together. 
over and over. I haven't had coffee. He's not acting out. He's standing calmly. And then he grins. So I thought, you know, at first maybe something, but no, and then he's like, I did it again. He keeps doing it. And I, okay, now it, it's okay. Stop, kid. <laughs> Got my coffee. I'm watching. And he's running around at full speed. And I think to myself, first of all, I'm very grateful for a place like this where I can make that sound and not be taken away. <laughs> but this kid, he's doing it. He's running around and he's running full. Bah, 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 and he stops. And he looks down. And his entire soul is caught up in something on the ground. Just his whole spirit is just pouring into something he sees on the ground. And he reaches down with a reverence I've only seen by drunks picking up cocktails. I mean, really. It's just... <laughs> and he picks something up, and it might have been the Magna Carta. It might have been the answer to all the secrets of the universe. It might have been the answer to the life, the universe, and everything. And he holds it up. And he smooths it off. It is a clean napkin that he found on the floor. I have no idea. I am a classically trained clown. I have no idea what was in his head that made him behave this way, but it was the greatest thing ever. And he pulled it to his chest conspiratorially. <laughs> and he ran off before I could ever get a chance to even think to ask him. <laughs> there is an idea in clown called discovery. It is the simplest idea that everything is amazing and new and interesting and wonderful and magical. And this little kid embodied something that I put inside me and took to an event and brought to the world and I wanted to bring back to you because this is one of those places where we manage to keep alive a sense of wonder. I hope tonight something here makes you say wow when you pull it close to you. Welcome to the open stage.